Excuse me. Girl. Hey, move it. Ding dong. Come on, this way. Let me go here. And this is our top five books of the year so far. Oh, and this is Leonard. Yeah. He's in our video too. He thinks everything's about him. Yes. Um, we are back. And yeah, that's all we're going to say about that. Yep. Then we're back. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So let's Should we start. just do one and one? Yeah. Okay. Mine are in no particular yeah, order. Yeah, mine either. I just I was just looking through my Goodreads, like what I had read this year and picking stuff out. So. I think one of ours is going to be the same. Okay. I will start with the physical books I have with me. Okay, I didn't bring any. Okay. All right. So my first one is The Disenchantments by Nina LaCour. Mm -hmm. I, this is the only book by her I hadn't read. I don't, I'm not really sure why, um, but I found it used at Powell's. I picked it up, and then I read it on vacation, and it's really good. It's about um, two best friends, a guy and a girl, and... They, the girls in an all-girl band that's really terrible, which is really an yeah. entertaining um, part of the book. They go on tour. He goes with them. He's in love with his best friend, and it's just them, like, kind of figuring all of that out. It has a lot of good, like, just growing up stuff in it. And, I mean, it's Nina LaCour, and she's, you know, always a good writer. Yeah. She does... I feel like she always does such a great job of capturing relationships between people, and this is no exception. So, that's one of them. And this book came out... A long time ago. This is 2013 for the cover photo, but I don't know when the actual book came out. So right. It's been a, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. I like that. All right. So my first one is 99% mine. I believe the author is Sally Thornton. I think that's her name. Her first book was The Hating Game. It's more like a romantic comedy type of thing. And now let me see if I can remember kind of what the book's about. So it's basically. I do know that. The main character comes back to a house that I believe, I don't remember if it was like her grandmother owned it or something, I just know, or an aunt, I think, something like that. I just remember she comes back to a house because someone in the family has died and she and her brother are basically going to fix the house up so that they can sell it. And the handyman that is fixing up the house is an old childhood friend who was her brother's friend and so she always kind of, the reason the book's called 99% Mine is because she always said that he was mostly her brother's and she was only 1% hers. Mm -hmm. And then so they start kind of like getting together and stuff like that. And she decides that he's going to be 99% hers. And just, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It was a really fun romantic story. Very uh, steamy in some parts. But I don't know. It was really good. I liked it. So. Yeah. All right. My next one is Goodbye Days, which is... Um, this is the saddest book, um, but I really loved it. Um, so it is about a boy whose three best friends were killed in a car wreck, and it starts like a week after that happened. Um, and it's just him kind of like figuring out life without his three best friends. Um, he, um, Jeff Zinner, not yeah, the yeah. <laughs> character, does such a good job of describing um, loss and just the things you think about when you lose someone close to you. Um, I read this in the middle of like grieving someone really close to me. So it was like, I wasn't just like a few tears. I was like sobbing hysterically through parts of it because it was so spot on. However, like, I don't know, it was kind of cathartic. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't know if I would or would not recommend it in that situation. Yeah. Um, just depends on the mood you're in. Cause like, yeah. It was definitely like the mood just struck me and I was like, I want to read this book and I could have stopped at any point and I didn't and um, it's just really good. So good. There were so many things I was like highlighting in it because I was just like, yes, this. Um, so yeah, it's yeah, really it's good. Really on my list yeah. to read. So. It's, you, I feel like you have to be in the right mood no yeah, matter what. Yeah. Um, it's definitely good and I think, you know, fiction's like a catalyst for dealing with things in real life. Yes. And, um, you know, you don't want to think about losing people close to you, but that's going to happen at some point in your life. Yeah. So I feel like it's a really good book. Yeah. And it's good to just like, I don't know, it's good to kind of get, get inside someone else's head dealing with that. Yeah. Because it maybe helps you deal with yeah, it. Yeah, I was going to say, like, it helps you kind of approach it besides, like, going head on, right? You're yes. just, like, you're approaching it from someone else's right. point of view. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. 
And I think if you haven't had that experience, it just kind of lets you into the head of someone who has and right. kind of like can maybe help you have a little empathy for anyone you know. So go yeah. for that. Thanks. Um, my next one is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. That's one of mine. I had a feeling this one would yeah. be both of yeah. the bars. Um, so we can just talk about this one really quick then mm -hmm. together. Um, so I read, I read it. Did you read it or did you listen to the audiobook? I listened to it. Okay. I had Because I listening. had heard a lot of people saying that they were fun listening to it, but I have to say that I didn't have an issue reading it, so if you just don't have time for an audiobook or something like that, I think it's fine to read it if that's what your choice oh, is. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sure reading it is great, too. But so, it's, I don't know, she's, I've only read, this is only my second Taylor Jenkins read book, but mm -hmm. she, so far, is, like, really getting up to the top of my, like, favorite authors list, because she just has a way with, like, crafting stories and characters that, like, yeah. amazes me. Yeah. Um, so this book is about, it's basically like a fictional, almost like biography about um, a band called The Six and then a singer called Daisy Jones and they collaborated on an album together and that was called Daisy Jones and The Six. And it ends up being this like iconic, like music changing yes. album. So yeah. it's like them looking back, what, 20 years later, yeah, 30 years later. Yeah, to see kind of like what happened, like yeah. what brought them together and what why they um, fell apart again and then because they released just one album yes and then that was it and it was like this amazing album and then that's it yeah. that's all you got so yeah. it's kind of a cool and and the kind of backstory too to like what you end up finding out at towards more towards the end of the book is like really awesome but that's kind of like a spoiler so yeah. I won't say it but it's yeah. it's really good um, it made me cry which I was not expecting I don't think it made me cry I but don't know why I just like just hit me. It just point. did like have some really emotional points and yes. I loved so I feel like something that she is really great at um the, the author Taylor yeah. Jenkins Reid is, yeah. um, is writing female characters who have been through some shit and are just kind of unapologetic about yes. it and like they just are like yeah I did all this shit and whatever like deal with it and I love that because yeah. I feel like these characters that she's writing in someone else's hands might be like, oh, I was used and abused, and um, I have so many regrets and whatnot. Um, and you definitely could see that perspective, yeah, for sure, in their life because that is kind of, you know, that certain things that happened to them were that. But they don't. They're just like the kind of people that like won't let them look at look yes. themselves. Look at them. They won't. Oh my gosh, they won't look at themselves that way. Yeah. Um, and I love that because I feel like, especially as women, like there are things that have happened to us or that we have done in the past that like we're like oh god I did this terrible thing and now I'm a bad person or whatever right. I feel like um I wish I had read more books like that as a young person yes because it's just like it's okay if you do stuff that maybe in the moment you're like you look back on it and you're like why did I do that it's okay to just own it and be like yeah that was part of my life that's something that yeah. let me here um and whatnot so I don't know I just love that mm -hmm. about her characters no yeah I, I but yeah like I really love that book and yeah. I didn't think it would resonate with me as much as it did. Yeah, like, I thought it was, was going to be really fun. Yeah, like <laughs> I, I thought it sounded really interesting, but yeah. I was just kind of like, oh, whatever, and then I just ended up loving it, so. Yeah, um, and I do have to say Jennifer is, I don't know if it's Beale or Beals, I think it's Beals, from Flashdance and The L Word, uh, just is phenomenal. She has, like, such a good voice for being Daisy Jones, and okay. she's the one who plays her, and... Um, she just has this husky, super sexy voice. If you've watched either of those shows, or I mean, she's been in other stuff too, but I feel like that's the like, iconic yeah. roles. Um, you already know that, but oh, she's so good. Yeah. And then it's like a multicast Which is also really audio awesome. Book. So they do that, yeah. Yeah. So it's just really well produced. So that's cool. Yeah. Alright. Um, you go again, because I... Um, okay. So my next awesome. one was Lady from the Black Lagoon. It's by... I believe her name is Mallory O'Mara. O'Mara. And this is a story about basically the woman that, which I can't think of her name now off the top of my head, but she was- I'm already, yeah. It's, I, I've been dying to yes. read it and just, I haven't, so. She's the, she's the creator basically of the creature from the Black Lagoon and for like the longest time, her con contributions to just horror movies in general, but like also this iconic monster have been, um, kind of hidden away um and so this book is basically about Mallory going on this journey to find out more about this woman and like find she finds out like about her younger years and you know building her biography almost but at the same time um it's interspersed with stories of 
her going on this journey and then also um, kind of showing like how Hollywood was back then and how it is now and the ways it has changed and it hasn't because Mallory at the time she's writing the book at least was a producer I believe mm -hmm. or an, an assistant yeah. on um, like horror movies so there are ways that like now women have more opportunities and aren't like hidden away and like their contributions are actually like um, you know, celebrated, but at the same time, a lot of the like shitty sexism and stuff like that still exists. So she kind of yeah. Talks I wish about I that. had read it um, already, but I just think about like my mind is drawing a blank. But there's just a lot of um, people who did creature designs yes. for other movies that are men that I know their name. Like, yeah, somewhere in my brain, I can't think of it right now. My working memory is terrible lately. But anyway, um, and they're so celebrated and they're so well known. Yeah. So it's kind of... Yeah, and this wasn't... And Creature from the Black Lagoon wasn't the only creature she had designed. It, yeah. She, it and I had never just, heard until this book. Yeah, it's just and I'm the fan. most like iconic creature yeah. kind of thing. But there's a few more where... like I didn't watch the movie, because I don't, I, don't, I don't watch actually horror movies as much as you do, but... Um, but I had the original heard of... 3D. Yeah. Oh, wow. It was cool. <laughs> I have seen like the movies that they, they reference. And she... Um, and see, now I feel shitty that I can't remember the name of the woman. But she was also one of the one of the first original female animators at Disney and stuff like that. So you find out, like, kind of, she had, like, a really cool life. And so she cool. was actually, like, really talented as an artist. So it kind of sucks that she was kind of, like, lost to history for the longest time. Yeah. It sucks, too, that it's just 0% surprising. Yeah. But I really need to read it. Yeah. I'm excited to read that. So, one. yeah, it was really good. I, I was interested in reading it, but, I, like, I didn't think it would become a favorite until I was done. But, like, I it was, like, another kind of Daisy Jones in the Six situation where I was, like, I didn't go into it, like, yes, it's going to be my favorite book. But when I finished it, I was, like, this is the best. So. Um, one other thing about Mallory O'Meara, she has a podcast yes. with Bria Grant, and I can't remember the name of it right Reading now. Glasses. Thank you. Yes. Reading Glasses. It's such a good podcast. Um... You recommend. S highly recommend, yes. Um, I spent the beginning part of this year binging a ton of those podcasts and they're yeah. so good. So, yeah. yeah. Alright, my next one is um, An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. Um, I feel like everyone who I just like, uh, like all the reviews back here, like a bunch of like Patrick Rothfuss, Love Grossman. Ashley Ford, Joseph Fink from Welcome to Night Vale, and just, it got a Kirkus star review. Like, everyone's talking about this book. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to get at. Um, for good reason. It's so good. Um, it's basically, the premise is this girl sees something that she thinks is art. She lives in New York City, and at first she's like, oh, that's cool. And then she's like, what am I doing? Why am I so jaded that I live in New York City, and I see this amazing piece of artwork, and I don't stop? She calls her friend to come and um, make a video of this thing that she's yeah. found. And it turns out that one of these, um, I think it's like a, a samurai <laughs> looking guy made of metal. I'm so bad at detail, at remembering details. But um, anyway, she calls him Carl. This is kind of the general shape you can see on here. Like looks like a warrior looking yeah. dude. Um, they have shown up in like 65 cities all around the world. So this video they made goes viral and as the story progresses, I feel like this isn't a spoiler, but it ends up being that she like made first contact. Um, it's a really good book and it does such a good job of looking at like our culture, even just like YouTube fame, yeah. um, all of this stuff and the things people will do when faced with that. And then it has the craziest ending. I think I read that there's another, gonna be another book. There better be. Okay. Like, I got to the end and was like, what? <laughs> um, so I think there's a sequel. There better be. I'm pretty sure there is. I'm pretty sure I heard that. But anyway, um, yeah, I was excited that Hank Green was write, writing a book because I've yeah. been a fan of the Vlogbrothers for a long time, and it did not disappoint. I loved it. Nice. And it's so different from any John Green books, which, yeah. I mean, I expect it to be. They're very different, but, yeah. Um, my next book is called Fix Her Up, and I am blinking on the author's name, unfortunately. But so this is uh, this is another like romantic comedy type of book. It is super like super sexy. Like I did not. It's got like this cute little cover of like a girl on like a ladder kissing a construction guy, and you're mm. just like, oh, it's adorable. And then you're reading, and you're just like, whew, okay, hold on, <laughs> wait a second. 
Uh, the basic premise is, is that the main female character, and like, dude, I'm so terrible, like, remembering names and stuff like that, but so the main female character is, um, she's like a professional clown, because like, she just loves doing that kind of stuff, and her family is actually like, in the business of like, flipping houses and stuff like that. That's less terrifying. Yeah. Like professional clown. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> Um, and she's just like small and petite and so because like she's got kind of like a childish um, profession her family doesn't take her seriously and then the main male character is he used to be a professional baseball player but he got injured and he was a friend of her brother so they go back to the small town that they're from basically and he ends up helping the brother on like a flipping job and so they the two characters end up interacting um, they start dating for like like in a fake way because he's trying to get a role on a t on a TV show like as an announcer mm -hmm. and but he's got like a bad reputation like he's got a reputation as like a womanizer and like you know like kind of like a bad dude like a bad sports guy or whatever and they want like something more clean cut and she wants to be taken more seriously so they decide okay we're gonna pretend to date so then I'll be taken seriously and you'll have like this good like image or like we'll remake your image and then they fall in love and as that goes but I don't know it's really cute this is like I write it like really fast there's an older sister and they kind of start like like hanging out together and like kind of reconciling their relationship and I don't know like it's it's even though it is a romance novel they have there's like, like a lot of good female characters and a lot of good female characterization in it so whoops that's hello arm. <laughs> My last one, I forgot the author's name completely, but it is Red, White, and Royal Blue, which I feel like everyone talked about that book too. Um, but it is basically the president of the United States, not our president right now. It's a fictional president. Has a daughter, a daughter, what am I saying? Does have a daughter, but also a son who is the person the book is about. Um, and her son and the Prince of England fall in love and it's just so cute. Um, yeah, that's all, that's like the general premise, but it was just a super, super fun read. Um, and I read it when I was just having a really hard time and I read it really fast and it was able to like, kind of just like pull me out of that, which is always good. Yes. Um, yeah, pretty much everything I've been reading other than Goodbye Days has been stuff like that. So yeah, um, but that one was just really like, I just had so much fun reading it. Um, that's on my to be read list as well. Yeah. I think you'll like it. Yeah. I think everyone, I feel like everyone's talked yeah. about it a lot, so. Yeah. And besides, all you need is the premise. Yeah. And if you think that sounds like fun, you'll like it, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> so my last book, um, really quick, is called The Right Swipe, and I forgot the author's name for this one as well. Is it Right Swipe like Tinder? Yeah, so basically it's another romance. Do you swipe, is this swiping right? Or is oh, it? sorry, this is right. I don't know. know. Left is this way. Okay. Left is no, right is yes. No, I've never used Tinder. I've never either, but I just know from... I, I actually have used my friend's Tinders because it's really fun Yeah. to be like, ooh! Yeah, yeah. but I myself personally have not used it. Um, anyway. So it's another romance. I don't know, I guess I've been like really into reading romance this year because I like binged out on YA last year, so I had to like change genres for a bit. Yeah. But, um, so the basic premise is that it's, um, the main female character is actually the... Uh, CEO or owner of a app-based dating web dating app sorry a dating app called crush which is basically like tinder um, but it's more female centric so it's got like stuff where you can report people if they send you an unsolicited dick pic or something like that um, and then the Does tinder not let you do that Sorry, I don't know. I'm just I just, like it I just should. know that there's like a there's another rival company called swipe okay that's more like bros and stuff like that so she's kind of set out to make her company different and that's one of the things they talk about is like they built it with like um, consent and everything like that in mind so. and then the main male character is a former football player who is um, working his aunt runs a matchmaking company that's called matchmaker but it's a little, like, so instead of being, like, an app, it's, like, a website, and you have to take, like, a hundred point, like, quiz and stuff like that. Like, they used to be, they used to run, like, a matchmaking service, and they took it online, and it's, it's, like, well-known, but it's definitely, like, not as, uh, big now, because, like, the whole app-based dating thing right. is bigger and stuff like that. And they end up teaming up on a, 
Oh, so the first they find out that um, they were like they both matched. Like that's why it's called right swipe because the beginning thing you find out is that they had both matched on her app a while ago, and it had been like a one night stand type of situation. They had planned to meet up again, and he ended up not being able to. And she doesn't know because he had like something happen in the family, and there's like a whole subplot with that as well. So they end up meeting up again. Um, working things out in that regard because she's kind of pissed about ghost ghosting and stuff like that like that kind of stuff comes up as well and then they end up teaming up and you know it just goes from there I don't want to like give away too much of the story but it's really good it's really fun they kind of like it's nice because they kind of work in stuff like consent and just like talking about like dating culture and stuff like that without making it like without the author making it overbearing or like really yeah. obvious kind of thing yeah. Um, yeah, because, yeah, like, so ghosting fun. has yeah. been a thing forever, but it's yeah. just gotten a name. I, it sounds to me like it's gotten worse yeah. because people will meet in situations like that where they meet yeah. online, and then it's just easier to be like, oh, I'll never see you again. Because, like, you know, back in the day, you had to have someone's phone number yes. to call them at home, and, like, someone else might pick up the phone. It was yeah. just harder to just straight up disappear yes. than it is now. Um, but anyway, that's always been annoying, and yeah. I have never... I don't think I've ever really... I mean, I have experienced it, but not the way it is these days. Yes. But it sounds terrible. So it's cool yeah. that she kind of, like, talks about that stuff. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, why so can't fun. you just be like, I don't like you, bye. Yeah. <laughs> why yeah, Why is exactly. that not a thing? Anyway. Right. So I think that's all of it. So I noticed that your theme was... Um, there were two things that I was like, oh. Oh, um, guy or girls meeting their brother's friends yeah. was the theme in some of yours. And then mine was bands. Yes. <laughs> I didn't realize that until we were talking about it. And I was like, oh, there's a little bit of a theme for both yeah. of us. Yay. All right. Well, that is it. We'll probably, I think, do maybe like a little updated one at the end of the year. Maybe we could do like top 10 at the end of the year. Yeah. Go through it a little bit faster, too, because I know we tend to get Sometimes. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Yeah. All right. Cool. Awesome. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Oh, tell us your favorite books so far. It doesn't yeah. have to be five. Just, you know, whatever yeah. you feel like sharing. And any book you read this year. It doesn't yes. have to come out this year. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Bye.